Indiana listen, is a U.S. state located in the Midwestern and Great Lakes regions of North America. Indiana is the 38th largest by area and the 17th most populous of the 50 United States. Its capital and largest city is Indianapolis. Indiana was admitted to the United States as the 19th U.S. state on December 11, 1816. Indiana borders Lake Michigan to the northwest, Michigan to the north, Ohio to the east, Kentucky to the south and southeast, and Illinois to the west. Before becoming a territory, various indigenous peoples and Native Americans inhabited Indiana for thousands of years. Since its founding as a territory, settlement patterns in Indiana have reflected regional cultural segmentation present in the eastern United States. The state's northernmost tier was settled primarily by people from New England and New York, central Indiana by migrants from the mid Atlantic states and from adjacent Ohio, and southern Indiana by settlers from the southern states, particularly Kentucky and Tennessee. Indiana has a diverse economy with a gross state product of $359.12 billion in 2017. Indiana has several metropolitan areas with populations greater than 100,000 and a number of smaller industrial cities and towns. Indiana is home to professional sports teams, including the NFL's Indianapolis Colts and the NBA's Indiana Pacers, and hosts several notable athletic events, such as the Indianapolis 500 and Brickyard 400 motorsports races. Etymology The state's name means land of the Indians", or simply, Indian land. It also stems from Indiana's territorial history. On May 7, 1800, the United States Congress passed legislation to divide the Northwest Territory into two areas and named the western section the Indiana Territory. In 1816, when Congress passed an enabling act to begin the process of establishing statehood for Indiana, a part of this territorial land became the geographic area for the new state. A resident of Indiana is officially known as a Hoosier. The etymology of this word is disputed, but the leading theory, as advanced by the Indiana Historical Bureau and the Indiana Historical Society, has Hoosier originating from Virginia, the Carolinas, and Tennessee a part of the upland south region of the United States as a term for a backwoodsman, a rough countryman, or a country bumpkin. History Aboriginal inhabitants The first inhabitants in what is now Indiana were the Paleo-Indians, who arrived about 8000 BC after the melting of the glaciers at the end of the Ice Age. Divided into small groups, the Paleo-Indians were nomads who hunted large games such as mastodons. They created stone tools made out of chert by chipping, napping and flaking. The Archaic period, which began between 5000 and 4000 BC, covered the next phase of indigenous culture. The people developed new tools as well as techniques to cook food, an important step in civilization. Such new tools included different types of spear points and knives, with various forms of notches. They made ground stone tools such as stone axes, woodworking tools and grinding stones. During the latter part of the period, they built earthwork mounds and middens, which showed that settlements were becoming more permanent. The Archaic period ended at about 1500 BC, although some Archaic people lived until 700 BC the woodland period commenced around 1500 BC, when various new cultural attributes appeared. During this period, the people created ceramics and pottery, and extended their cultivation of plants. An early woodland period group named the Adena people had elegant burial rituals, featuring log tombs beneath earth mounds. In the middle portion of the woodland period, the Hopewell people began developing long-range trade of goods. 
Nearing the end of the stage, the people developed highly productive cultivation and adaptation of agriculture, growing such crops as corn and squash. The woodland period ended around 1000 AD the Mississippian culture emerged, lasting from 1000 AD until the 15th century, shortly before the arrival of Europeans. During this stage, the people created large urban settlements designed according to their cosmology, with large mounds and plazas defining ceremonial and public spaces. The concentrated settlements depended on the agricultural surpluses. One such complex was the Angel Mounds. They had large public areas such as plazas and platform mounds, where leaders lived or conducted rituals. Mississippian civilization collapsed in Indiana during the mid 15th century for reasons that remain unclear. The historic Native American tribes in the area at the time of European encounter spoke different languages of the Algonquin family. They included the Shawnee, Miami, and Illini. Later they were joined by refugee tribes from eastern regions including the Delaware who settled in the White and Whitewater River valleys. <inaudible> <inaudible> European exploration and sovereignty In 1679, French explorer René Robert Cavelier, Sieur de la Salle was the first European to cross into Indiana after reaching present-day South Bend at the St. Joseph River. He returned the following year to learn about the region. French-Canadian fur traders soon arrived, bringing blankets, jewelry, tools, whiskey and weapons to trade for skins with the Native Americans. By 1702, Sieur Juchereau established the first trading post near Vincennes. In 1715, Sieur de Vincennes built Fort Miami at Kekionga, now Fort Wayne. In 1717, another Canadian, Picote de Belletre, built Fort Weatenon on the Wabash River, to try to control Native American trade routes from Lake Erie to the Mississippi River. In 1732, Sieur de Vincennes built a second fur trading post at Vincennes. French Canadian settlers, who had left the earlier post because of hostilities, returned in larger numbers. In a period of a few years, British colonists arrived from the east and contended against the Canadians for control of the lucrative fur trade. Fighting between the French and British colonists occurred throughout the 1750s as a result. The Native American tribes of Indiana sided with the French Canadians during the French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War. With British victory in 1763, the French were forced to cede to the British Crown all their lands in North America east of the Mississippi River and north and west of the colonies. The tribes in Indiana did not give up, they captured Fort Weatenon and Fort Miami during Pontiac's Rebellion. The British Royal Proclamation of 1763 designated the land west of the Appalachians for Native American use, and excluded British colonists from the area, which the Crown called, "...Indian Territory". In 1775, the American Revolutionary War began as the colonists sought self-government and independence from the British. The majority of the fighting took place near the East Coast, but the Patriot military officer George Rogers Clark called for an army to help fight the British in the West. Clark's army won significant battles and took over Vincennes and Fort Sackville on February 25, 1779. During the war, Clark managed to cut off British troops, who were attacking the Eastern colonists from the West. His success is often credited for changing the course of the American Revolutionary War. At the end of the war, through the Treaty of Paris, the British Crown ceded their claims to the land south of the Great Lakes to the newly formed United States, including Native American lands. The frontier In 1787, the U.S. defined the Northwest Territory which included the area of present-day Indiana. In 1800, Congress separated Ohio from the Northwest Territory, designating the rest of the land as the Indiana Territory. 
President Thomas Jefferson chose William Henry Harrison as the governor of the territory, and Vincennes was established as the capital. After the Michigan Territory was separated and the Illinois Territory was formed, Indiana was reduced to its current size and geography, starting with the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794 and the Treaty of Greenville in 1795. Native American titles to Indiana lands were extinguished by usurpation, purchase, or war and treaty. About half the state was acquired in the Treaty of St. Mary's from the Miami in 1818. Purchases weren't complete until the Treaty of Mississinuas in 1826 acquired the last of the reserved Native American lands in the Northeast. A portrait of the Indiana frontier about 1810, the frontier was defined by the Treaty of Fort Wayne in 1809, adding much of southwestern lands around Vincennes and southeastern lands adjacent to Cincinnati, to areas along the Ohio River as part of U.S. territory. Settlements were military outposts, Fort Weatenon in the northwest and Fort Miami later Fort Wayne in the northeast, Fort Knox and Vincennes settlement on the lower Wabash, Clarksville across from Louisville, Vivi, and Corydon along the Ohio River, the Quaker colony in Richmond on the eastern border, and Connors Post later Connorsville on the east-central frontier. Indianapolis would not be a populated place for 15 more years, and central and northern Indiana Territory remained savage wilderness. Native American presence was waning, but still a threat to settlement. Only two counties, Clark and Dearborn in the extreme southeast, had been organized. Land titles issued out of Cincinnati were sparse. Migration was chiefly by flatboat on the Ohio River westerly, and wagon trails up the Wabash, White River Valleys west and Whitewater River Valleys east. In 1810 the Shawnee chief Tecumseh and his brother Tenskwatawa encouraged other tribes in the territory to resist European settlement. Tensions rose and the U.S. authorized Harrison to launch a preemptive expedition against Tecumseh's Confederacy. The U.S. gained victory at the Battle of Tippecano on November 7, 1811. Tecumseh was killed in 1813 during the Battle of Thames. After his death, armed resistance to United States control ended in the region. Most Native American tribes in the state were later removed to west of the Mississippi River in the 1820s and 1830s after U.S. negotiations and purchase of their lands. <laughs> <laughs> Statehood and settlement In order to decrease the threat of Indian raids following the Battle of Tippecano, Corydon, a town in the far southern part of Indiana, was named the second capital of the Indiana Territory in May 1813. Two years later, a petition for statehood was approved by the Territorial General Assembly and sent to Congress. An enabling act was passed to provide an election of delegates to write a constitution for Indiana. On June 10, 1816, delegates assembled at Corydon to write the Constitution, which was completed in 19 days. President James Madison approved Indiana's admission into the Union as the 19th state on December 11, 1816. In 1825, the state capital was moved from Corydon to Indianapolis. Many European immigrants went west to settle in Indiana in the early 19th century. The largest immigrant group to settle in Indiana were Germans, as well as numerous immigrants from Ireland and England. Americans who were primarily ethnically English migrated from the northern tier of New York and New England, as well as the mid-Atlantic state of Pennsylvania. The arrival of steamboats on the Ohio River in 1811, and the National Road at Richmond in 1829 greatly facilitated settlement of northern and western Indiana. Following statehood, the new government worked to transform Indiana from a frontier into a developed, well-populated, and thriving state, beginning significant demographic and economic changes. The state's founders initiated a program, Indiana Mammoth Internal Improvement Act, that led to the construction of roads, canals, railroads and state-funded public schools. 
The plans bankrupted the state and were a financial disaster, but increased land and produce value more than fourfold. In response to the crisis and in order to avert another, in 1851, a second constitution was adopted. Among its provisions were a prohibition on public debt and extension of suffrage to African Americans. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Civil War. During the American Civil War, Indiana became politically influential and played an important role in the affairs of the nation. As the first Western state to mobilize for the United States in the war, Indiana had soldiers participating in all of the major engagements. The state provided 126 infantry regiments, 26 batteries of artillery and 13 regiments of cavalry to the cause of the Union. In 1861 Indiana was assigned a quota of 7,500 men to join the Union Army. So many volunteered in the first call that thousands had to be turned away. Before the war ended, Indiana contributed 208,367 men to fight and serve in the war. Casualties were over 35% among these men, 24,416 lost their lives in the conflict and over 50,000 more were wounded. The only Civil War conflicts in Indiana were the Newburgh Raid, a bloodless capture of Newburgh, Indiana, and the Battle of Corydon, which occurred during Morgan's Raid and left 15 dead, 40 wounded, and 355 captured. Indiana remained a largely agricultural state. Post war industries included food processing, such as milling grain, distilling it into alcohol, and meatpacking, building of wagons, buggies, farm machinery, and hardware. <laughs> Early 20th century With the onset of the Industrial Revolution, Indiana industry began to grow at an accelerated rate across the northern part of the state. With industrialization, workers developed labor unions and suffrage movements arose in relation to the progress of women. The Indiana gas boom led to rapid industrialization during the late 19th century by providing cheap fuel to the region. In the early 20th century, Indiana developed into a strong manufacturing state with ties to the new auto industry. Haynes Apperson, the nation's first commercially successful auto company, operated in Kokomo until 1925. The construction of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the start of auto related industries were also related to the auto industry boom. During the 1930s, Indiana, like the rest of the nation, was affected by the Great Depression. The economic downturn had a wide ranging negative impact on Indiana, such as the decline of urbanization. The Dust Bowl further to the west resulted in many migrants fleeing into the more industrialized Midwest. Governor Paul V. McNutt's administration struggled to build a state-funded welfare system to help the overwhelmed private charities. During his administration, spending and taxes were both cut drastically in response to the Depression, and the state government was completely reorganized. McNutt ended prohibition in the state and enacted the state's first income tax. On several occasions, he declared martial law to put an end to worker strikes. World War II helped lift the economy in Indiana, as the war required steel, food and other goods that were produced in the state. Roughly 10% of Indiana's population joined the armed forces, while hundreds of industries earned war production contracts and began making war material. Indiana manufactured 4.5% of total United States military armaments produced during World War II, ranking eighth among the 48 states. The expansion of industry to meet war demands helped end the Great Depression. <laughs> Modern era With the conclusion of World War II, Indiana rebounded to levels of production before the Great Depression. 
Industry became the primary employer, a trend that continued into the 1960s. Urbanization during the 1950s and 1960s led to substantial growth in the state's cities. The auto, steel and pharmaceutical industries topped Indiana's major businesses. Indiana's population continued to grow during the years after the war, exceeding 5 million by the 1970 census. In the 1960s the administration of Matthew E. Welsh adopted its first sales tax of 2%. Indiana schools were desegregated in 1949. In 1950, the Census Bureau reported Indiana's population as 95.5% white and 4.4% black. Governor Welsh also worked with the General Assembly to pass the Indiana Civil Rights Bill, granting equal protection to minorities in seeking employment. Beginning in 1970, a series of amendments to the state constitution were proposed. With adoption, the Indiana Court of Appeals was created and the procedure of appointing justices on the courts was adjusted. The 1973 oil crisis created a recession that hurt the automotive industry in Indiana. Companies such as Delco Electronics and Delphi began a long series of downsizing that contributed to high unemployment rates in manufacturing in Anderson, Muncie, and Kokomo. The restructuring and deindustrialization trend continued until the 1980s, when the national and state economy began to diversify and recover. Geography <inaudible> 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 With a total area land and water of 36,418 square miles 94,320 square kilometers, Indiana ranks as the 38th largest state in size. The state has a maximum dimension north to south of 250 miles 400 kilometers and a maximum east to west dimension of 145 miles 233 kilometers. The state's geographic center 39 degrees 53.7 in, 86 degrees 16.0 w is in Marion County, located in the Midwestern United States. Indiana is one of eight states that make up the Great Lakes region. Indiana is bordered on the north by Michigan, on the east by Ohio, and on the west by Illinois. Lake Michigan borders Indiana on the northwest and the Ohio River separates Indiana from Kentucky on the south. <laughs> Geology and terrain The average altitude of Indiana is about 760 feet meters above sea level. The highest point in the state is Hoosier Hill in Wayne County at 1,257 feet 383 meters above sea level. The lowest point at 320 feet 98 meters above sea level is located in Posey County, where the Wabash River meets the Ohio River. Only 2,850 square miles square kilometers have an altitude greater than 1,000 feet 300 meters and this area is enclosed within 14 counties. About 4,700 square miles square kilometers have an elevation of less than 500 feet 150 meters, mostly concentrated along the Ohio and Lower Wabash Valleys, from Tell City and Terre Haute to Evansville and Mount Vernon. The state includes two natural regions of the United States, the Central Lowlands and the Interior Low Plateaus. The Till Plains make up the northern and central regions of Indiana. Much of its appearance is a result of elements left behind by glaciers. Central Indiana is mainly flat with some low rolling hills except where rivers cut deep valleys through the plain, like at the Wabash River and Sugar Creek and soil composed of glacial sands, gravel and clay, which results in exceptional farmland. Northern Indiana is similar, except for the presence of higher and hillier terminal moraines and hundreds of kettle lakes. In northwest Indiana there are various sand ridges and dunes, some reaching nearly 200 feet in height. 
These are located along the Lake Michigan shoreline and also inland to the Kankakee Outwash Plain. Southern Indiana is characterized by valleys and rugged, hilly terrain, contrasting from much of the state. Here, bedrock is exposed at the surface and isn't buried in glacial till like further north. Because of the prevalent Indiana limestone, there are numerous caves, caverns, and quarries in the area. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hydrology. Major river systems in Indiana include the Whitewater, White, Blue, Wabash, St. Joseph, and Maumee rivers. According to the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, there were 65 rivers, streams, and creeks of environmental interest or scenic beauty, which included only a portion of an estimated 24,000 total river miles within the state. The Wabash River, which is the longest free flowing river east of the Mississippi River, is the official river of Indiana. At 475 miles 764 kilometers in length, the river bisects the state from northeast to southwest, forming part of the state's border with Illinois, before converging with the Ohio River. The river has been the subject of several songs, such as On the Banks of the Wabash, The Wabash Cannonball and Back Home Again. In Indiana, there are about 900 lakes listed by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. To the northwest, Indiana borders Lake Michigan, one of five lakes comprising the Great Lakes, the largest group of freshwater lakes in the world. Tippecano Lake, the deepest lake in the state, reaches depths at nearly 120 feet 37 meters, while Lake Wawasee is the largest natural lake in Indiana. At 10,750 acres summer pool level, Lake Monroe is the largest lake in Indiana. Topic. Climate Indiana had a humid continental climate, with cold winters and hot, wet summers, with only the extreme southern portion of the state lying within the humid subtropical climate, which receives more precipitation than other parts of Indiana. However, as of the 2016 update, about half of the state is now humid subtropical. Temperatures generally diverge from the north and south sections of the state. In the middle of the winter, average high, low temperatures range from around 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 1 degree Celsius, minus 10 degrees Celsius, in the far north to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, minus 4 degrees Celsius, in the far south. In the middle of summer, there is generally a little less variation across the state, as average high, low temperatures range from around 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius, 18 degrees Celsius in the far north to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 69 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Celsius in the far south. The record high temperature for the state was 116 degrees Fahrenheit, 47 degrees Celsius, set on July 14, 1936 at Collegeville. The record low was -36 degrees Fahrenheit, -38 degrees Celsius on January 19, 1994 at New Whiteland. The growing season typically spans from 155 days in the north to 185 days in the south. While droughts occasionally occur in the state, rainfall totals are distributed relatively equally throughout the year. Precipitation totals range from 35 inches (89 near Lake Michigan in northwest Indiana to 45 inches (110 along the Ohio River in the south, while the state's average is 40 inches (100 Annual snowfall in Indiana varies widely across the state, ranging from 80 inches centimeters in the northwest along Lake Michigan to 14 inches centimeters in the far south. Lake effect snow accounts for roughly half of the snowfall in northwest and north-central Indiana due to the effects of the moisture and relative warmth of Lake Michigan upwind. 
The mean wind speed is 8 miles per hour, 13 kilometers per hour. In a 2012 report, Indiana was ranked 8th in a list of the top 20 tornado-prone states based on National Weather Service data from 1950 through 2011. A 2011 report ranked South Bend 15th among the top 20 tornado-prone cities in the United States, while another report from 2011 ranked Indianapolis 8th. Despite its vulnerability, Indiana is not a part of Tornado Alley. Ecosystem <inaudible> 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 Topic: Time zones. Indiana is one of 13 U.S. states that are divided into more than one time zone. Indiana's time zones have fluctuated over the past century. At present, most of the state observes Eastern Time. Six counties near Chicago and six near Evansville observe Central Time. Debate continues on the matter. Before 2006, most of Indiana did not observe Daylight Saving Time DST. Some counties within this area, particularly Floyd, Clark, and Harrison counties near Louisville, Kentucky, and Ohio and Dearborn counties near Cincinnati, Ohio, unofficially observed DST by local custom. Since April 2006 the entire state observes DST. Topic. Indiana counties and statistical areas Indiana is divided into 92 counties. As of 2010, the state includes 16 metropolitan and 25 micropolitan statistical areas, 117 incorporated cities, 450 towns, and several other smaller divisions and statistical areas. Marion County and Indianapolis have a consolidated city-county government. Topic: Major cities. Indianapolis is the capital of Indiana and its largest city. Indiana's four largest metropolitan areas are Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Evansville, and South Bend. The table below lists the ten largest municipalities in the state based on the 2015 United States Census estimate. Topic: Demographics. Topic: Population. The United States Census Bureau estimates that the population of Indiana was 6,619,680 on July 1, 2015, a 2.10% increase since the 2010 United States Census, and estimates for 2017 put the population at 6,663,280. The state's population density was 181.0 persons per square mile mile, the 16th highest in the United States. As of the 2010 U.S. Census, Indiana's population center is located northwest of Sheridan, in Hamilton County, plus 40.1492460086.259514. In 2005, 77.7% .7 of Indiana residents lived in metropolitan counties, 16.5% lived in micropolitan counties, and 5.9% lived in non core counties. Topic. Ancestry The racial makeup of the state based on the 2011 population estimate was 86.8% White American 81.3% Non-Hispanic White 9.4% Black or African American 1.7% Asian 1.7% biracial or multiracial 0.4% Native American 
0.1% native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islanders, Hispanic or Latino of any race made up 6.2% of the population. The Hispanic population is Indiana's fastest growing ethnic minority. 28.2% of Indiana's children under the age of one belong to minority groups note, children born to white Hispanics are counted as minority group. German is the largest ancestry reported in Indiana, with 22.7% of the population reporting that ancestry in the census. Persons citing American and English ancestry are also numerous, as are Irish and Polish most of those citing American ancestry are actually of English descent, but have family that has been in North America for so long, in many cases since the early colonial era, that they identify simply as American. In the 1980 census 1,776,144 people claimed German ancestry, 1,356,135 claimed English ancestry and 1,017,944 claimed Irish ancestry out of a total population of 4,241,975 making the state 42% German, 32% 2% English and 24% Irish. Topic: Population growth. Population growth since 1990 has been concentrated in the counties surrounding Indianapolis, with four of the top five fastest growing counties in that area: Hamilton, Hendricks, Johnson, and Hancock. The other county is Dearborn County, which is near Cincinnati, Ohio. Hamilton County has also been the fastest growing county in the area consisting of Indiana and its bordering states of Illinois, Michigan, Ohio and Kentucky, and is the 20th fastest growing county in the country, with a population of 829,817. Indianapolis is the largest city in Indiana and 12th largest in the United States, according to the 2010 census. Three other cities in Indiana have a population greater than 100,000, Fort Wayne 253,617, Evansville 117,429 and South Bend 101,168. Since 2000, Fishers has seen the largest population rise amongst the state's 20 largest cities with an increase of 100%. Hammond and Gary have seen the largest population declines regarding the top 20 largest cities since 2000, with a decrease of 6.8 and 21.0% respectively. Other cities that have seen extensive growth since 2000 are Noblesville 39.4%, Greenwood 81%, Carmel 21.4% and Lawrence 9.3%. Meanwhile, Evansville minus 4.2 percent, Anderson minus 4 percent, and Muncie minus 3.9 percent are cities that have seen the steepest decline in population in the state. Indianapolis has largest population of the state's metropolitan areas and 33rd largest in the country. The Indianapolis metropolitan area encompasses Marion County and nine surrounding counties in central Indiana. Note, births in table don't add up, because Hispanics are counted both by their ethnicity and by their race, giving a higher overall number. Since 2016, data for births of white Hispanic origin are not collected, but included in one Hispanic group. Persons of Hispanic origin may be of any race, based on population estimates for 2011, 6.6% of the state's population is under the age of 5, 24.5% is under the age of 18, and 13.2% is 65 years of age or older. From the 2010 U.S. Census demographic data for Indiana, the median age is 37.0 years. <inaudible> <inaudible> median income 
As of the 2010 U.S. Census, Indiana's median household income was $44,616, ranking it 36th among the United States and the District of Columbia. In 2005, the median household income for Indiana residents was $43,993. Nearly 498,700 Indiana households had incomes from $50,000 to $74,999, accounting for 20% of all households. Hamilton County's median household income is nearly $35,000 higher than the Indiana average. At $78,932, it ranks seventh in the country among counties with less than 250,000 people. The next highest median incomes in Indiana are also found in the Indianapolis suburbs. Hendricks County has a median of $57,538, followed by Johnson County at $56,251. Topic. Religion Although the largest single religious denomination in the state is Catholic 747,706 members, most of the population are members of various Protestant denominations. The largest Protestant denomination by number of adherents in 2010 was the United Methodist Church with 355,043. A study by the Graduate Center at the City University of New York found that 20% are Roman Catholic, 14% belong to different Baptist churches, 10% are other Christians, 9% are Methodist, and 6% are Lutheran. The study found that 16% of Indiana is affiliated with no religion. Indiana is home to the Benedictine Street Meinrad Archabbey, one of two Catholic archabbeys in the United States and one of eleven in the world. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has one of its two seminaries in Fort Wayne. Two conservative denominations, the Free Methodist Church and the Wesleyan Church, have their headquarters in Indianapolis as does the Christian Church. The Fellowship of Grace Brethren Churches maintains offices and publishing work in Winona Lake. Huntington serves as the home to the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. Anderson is home to the headquarters of the Church of God. The headquarters of the Missionary Church is located in Fort Wayne, the Friends United Meeting of the Religious Society of Friends, the largest branch of American Quakerism, is based in Richmond, which also houses the oldest Quaker seminary in the United States, the Earlham School of Religion. The Islamic Society of North America is headquartered in Plainfield. Topic. Language. Spanish is the second most spoken language in Indiana, after English. <inaudible> <inaudible> Law and government Indiana has a constitutional Democratic Republican form of government with three branches, the executive, including an elected governor and lieutenant governor, the legislative, consisting of an elected bicameral general assembly, and the judicial, the Supreme Court of Indiana, the Indiana Court of Appeals and Circuit Courts. The governor of Indiana serves as the chief executive of the state and has the authority to manage the government as established in the Constitution of Indiana. The governor and the lieutenant governor are jointly elected to four-year terms, with gubernatorial elections running concurrent with United States presidential elections 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, etc. The governor may not serve more than two consecutive terms. The governor works with the Indiana General Assembly and the Supreme Court of Indiana to govern the state and has the authority to adjust the other branches. Special sessions of the General Assembly can be called upon by the governor as well as have the power to select and remove leaders of nearly all state departments, boards and commissions. 
Other notable powers include calling out the Indiana Guard Reserve or the Indiana National Guard in times of emergency or disaster, issuing pardons or commuting the sentence of any criminal offenders except in cases of treason or impeachment and possessing an abundant amount of statutory authority. The lieutenant governor serves as the president of the Senate and is responsible for ensuring that the Senate rules are acted in accordance with by its constituents. The lieutenant governor can only vote to break ties. If the governor dies in office, becomes permanently incapacitated, resigns or is impeached, the lieutenant governor becomes governor. If both the governor and lieutenant governor positions are unoccupied, the Senate president pro tempore becomes governor. The Indiana General Assembly is composed of a 50 member Senate and 100 member House of Representatives. The Senate is the upper house of the General Assembly and the House of Representatives is the lower house. The General Assembly has exclusive legislative authority within the state government. Both the Senate and House of Representatives can introduce legislation, with the exception that the Senate is not authorized to initiate legislation that will affect revenue. Bills are debated and passed separately in each house, but must be passed by both houses before they can be submitted to the governor. The legislature can nullify a veto from the governor with a majority vote of full membership in the Senate and House of Representatives. Each law passed by the General Assembly must be used without exception to the entire state. The General Assembly has no authority to create legislation that targets only a particular community. The General Assembly can manage the state's judiciary system by arranging the size of the courts and the bounds of their districts. It also can oversee the activities of the executive branch of the state government, has restricted power to regulate the county governments within the state, and has exclusive power to initiate the method to alter the Indiana Constitution. The Indiana Supreme Court is made up of five judges with a court of appeals composed of 15 judges. The governor selects judges for the Supreme and Appeal Courts from a group of applicants chosen by a special commission. After serving for two years, the judges must acquire the support of the electorate to serve for a 10-year term. In nearly all cases, the Supreme Court does not have original jurisdiction and can only hear cases that are petitioned to the court following being heard in lower courts. Local circuit courts are where the majority of cases begin with a trial and the consequence decided by the jury. The Supreme Court does have original and sole jurisdiction in certain specific areas including the practice of law, discipline or disbarment of judges appointed to the lower state courts, and supervision over the exercise of jurisdiction by the other lower courts of the state. The state is divided into 92 counties, which are led by a board of county commissioners. Ninety counties in Indiana have their own circuit court with a judge elected for a six-year term. The remaining two counties, Dearborn and Ohio, are combined into one circuit. Many counties operate superior courts in addition to the circuit court. In densely populated counties where the caseload is traditionally greater, separate courts have been established to solely hear either juvenile, criminal, probate or small claims cases. The establishment, frequency and jurisdiction of these additional courts varies greatly from county to county. There are 85 city and town courts in Indiana municipalities, created by local ordinance, typically handling minor offenses and not considered courts of record. County officials that are elected to four-year terms include an auditor, recorder, treasurer, sheriff, coroner and clerk of the circuit court. All incorporated cities in Indiana have a mayor and council form of municipal government. Towns are governed by a town council and townships are governed by a township trustee and advisory board. U.S. News and World Report ranked Indiana first in the publication's inaugural 2017 Best States for Government listing. Among individual categories, Indiana ranked above average in budget transparency number one, government digitization number six, and fiscal stability number eight, and ranked average in state integrity number 25. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Politics. From 1880 to 1924, a resident of Indiana was included in all but one presidential election. Indiana Representative William Hayden English was nominated for vice president and ran with Winfield Scott Hancock in the 1880 election. In 1884 former Indiana Governor Thomas A. Hendricks was elected vice president of the United States. He served until his death on November 25, 1885, under President Grover Cleveland. In 1888 former Senator from Indiana Benjamin Harrison was elected President of the United States and served one term. He remains the only U.S. President from Indiana. Indiana Senator Charles W. Fairbanks was elected Vice President in 1904, serving under President Theodore Roosevelt until 1909. Fairbanks made another run for vice president with Charles Evans Hughes in 1916, but they both lost to Woodrow Wilson and former Indiana Governor Thomas R. Marshall, who served as vice president from 1913 until 1921. Not until 1988 did another presidential election involve a native of Indiana, when Senator Dan Quayle was elected vice president and served one term with George H. W. Bush. Governor Mike Pence was elected vice president in 2016, to serve with Donald Trump. Indiana has long been considered to be a Republican stronghold, particularly in presidential races. The Cook Partisan Voting Index now rates Indiana as R plus 9. Indiana was one of only ten states to support Republican Wendell Wilkie in 1940. On 14 occasions has the Republican candidate defeated the Democrat by a double-digit margin in the state, including six times where a Republican won the state by more than 20%. In 2000 and 2004 George W. Bush won the state by a wide margin while the election was much closer overall. The state has only supported a Democrat for president five times since 1900. In 1912, Woodrow Wilson became the first Democrat to win the state with 43% of the vote. Twenty years later, Franklin D. Roosevelt won the state with 55% of the vote over incumbent Republican Herbert Hoover. Roosevelt won the state again in 1936. In 1964, 56% of voters supported Democrat Lyndon B. Johnson over Republican Barry Goldwater. Forty-four years later, Democrat Barack Obama narrowly won the state against John McCain 50% to 49%. In the following election, Republican Mitt Romney won back the state for the Republican Party with 54% of the vote over the incumbent President Obama who won 43%. While only five Democratic presidential nominees have carried Indiana since 1900, 11 Democrats were elected governor during that time. Before Mitch Daniels became governor in 2005, Democrats had held the office for 16 consecutive years. Indiana elects two senators and nine representatives to Congress. The state has 11 electoral votes in presidential elections. Seven of the districts favor the Republican Party according to the CPVI rankings. There are currently seven Republicans serving as representatives and two Democrats. Historically, Republicans have been strongest in the eastern and central portions of the state, while Democrats have been strongest in the northwestern part of the state. Occasionally, certain counties in the southern part of the state will vote Democratic. Marion County, Indiana's most populous county, supported the Republican candidates from 1968 to 2000, before backing the Democrats in the 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2016 elections. Indiana's second most populous county, Lake County, strongly supports the Democratic Party and has not voted for a Republican since 1972. 
In 2005, the Bay Area Center for Voting Research rated the most liberal and conservative cities in the United States on voting statistics in the 2004 presidential election, based on 237 cities with populations of more than 100,000. Five Indiana cities were mentioned in the study. On the liberal side, Gary was ranked second and South Bend came in at 83. Among conservative cities, Fort Wayne was 44th, Evansville was 60th and Indianapolis was 82nd on the list. Military installations Indiana is home to several current and former military installations. The largest of these is the Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division, located approximately 25 miles southwest of Bloomington, which is the third largest naval installation in the world, comprising approximately 108 square miles of territory. Other active installations include Air National Guard fighter units at Fort Wayne, and Terre Haute airports to be consolidated at Fort Wayne under the 2005 BRAC proposal, with the Terre Haute facility remaining open as a non-flying installation. The Army National Guard conducts operations at Camp Atterbury in Edinburgh, Indiana, helicopter operations out of Shelbyville Airport and urban training at Muscatatuck Urban Training Center. The Army's Newport Chemical Depot, which is now closed and turning into a coal purifier plant. Indiana was formerly home to two major military installations, Grissom Air Force Base near Peru realigned to an Air Force Reserve installation in 1994 and Fort Benjamin Harrison near Indianapolis, now closed, though the Department of Defense continues to operate a large finance center there, Defense Finance and Accounting Service. Topic Culture Topic Arts Topic Sports Topic Motorsports Indiana has an extensive history with auto racing. Indianapolis hosts the Indianapolis 500-mile race over Memorial Day weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway every May. The name of the race is usually shortened to Indy 500 and also goes by the nickname The Greatest Spectacle in Racing. The race attracts over 250,000 people every year making it the largest single-day sporting event in the world. The track also hosts the Brickyard 400 NASCAR and the Red Bull Indianapolis Grand Prix. From 2000 to 2007, it hosted the United States Grand Prix Formula One. Indiana features the world's largest and most prestigious drag race, the NHRA Mac Tools U.S. Nationals, held each Labor Day weekend at Lucas Oil Raceway at Indianapolis in Claremont, Indiana. Indiana is also host to a major unlimited hydroplane racing powerboat race circuits in the Major H1 Unlimited League, the Madison Regatta Madison, Indiana. Topic. Professional sports As of 2013 Indiana has produced more National Basketball Association NBA players per capita than any other state. Muncie has produced the most per capita of any American city, with two other Indiana cities in the top ten. It has a rich basketball heritage that reaches back to the formative years of the sport itself. The Indiana Pacers of the NBA play their home games at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. They began play in 1967 in the American Basketball Association ABBA and joined the NBA when the leagues merged in 1976. Although James Naismith developed basketball in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1891, Indiana is where high school basketball was born. 
In 1925, Naismith visited an Indiana basketball state finals game along with 15,000 screaming fans and later wrote, "...basketball really had its origin in Indiana, which remains the center of the sport." The 1986 film Whose Ears is inspired by the story of the 1954 Indiana State Champions Milan High School. Professional basketball player Larry Bird was born in West Baden Springs and was raised in French Lick. He went on to lead the Boston Celtics to the NBA Championship in 1981, 1984, and 1986. Indianapolis is home to the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are members of the South Division of the American Football Conference. The Colts have roots back to 1913 as the Dayton Triangles. They became an official team after moving to Baltimore, Maryland, in 1953. In 1984, the Colts relocated to Indianapolis, leading to an eventual rivalry with the Baltimore Ravens. After calling the RCA Dome home for 25 years, the Colts currently play their home games at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. While in Baltimore, the Colts won the 1970 Super Bowl. In Indianapolis, the Colts won Super Bowl XLI, bringing the franchise total to two. In recent years the Colts have regularly competed in the NFL playoffs. Topic. Professional teams The following table shows the professional sports teams in Indiana. Teams in italic are in major professional leagues. The following is a table of sports venues in Indiana that have a capacity in excess of 30,000. College athletics Indiana has had great sports success at the collegiate level. In men's basketball, the Indiana Hoosiers have won five NCAA national championships and 22 Big Ten conference championships. The Purdue Boilermakers were selected as the national champions in 1932 before the creation of the tournament, and have won 23 Big Ten championships. The Boilermakers along with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish have both won a national championship in women's basketball. In college football, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish have won 11 consensus national championships, as well as the Rose Bowl game, Cotton Bowl Classic, Orange Bowl and Sugar Bowl. Meanwhile, the Purdue Boilermakers have won 10 Big Ten championships and have won the Rose Bowl and Peach Bowl. Schools fielding NCAA Division I athletic programs include topic, Economy and infrastructure In 2017, Indiana had a civilian labor force of nearly 3.4 million, the 15th largest in the U.S. Indiana has an unemployment rate of 3.4%, lower than the national average. The total gross state product in 2016 was $347.2 billion. A high percentage of Indiana's income is from manufacturing. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 17% of the state's non-farm workforce is employed in manufacturing, the highest of any state in the U.S. The state's five leading exports were motor vehicles and auto parts, pharmaceutical products, industrial machinery, optical and medical equipment, and electric machinery. Despite its reliance on manufacturing, Indiana has been less affected by declines in traditional rust belt manufactures than many of its neighbors neighbors. The explanation appears to be certain factors in the labor market. First, much of the heavy manufacturing, such as industrial machinery and steel, requires highly skilled labor, and firms are often willing to locate where hard-to-train skills already exist. Second, Indiana's labor force is located primarily in medium-sized and smaller cities rather than in very large and expensive metropolises. This makes it possible for firms to offer somewhat lower wages for these skills than would normally be paid. 
Firms often see in Indiana a chance to obtain higher than average skills at lower than average wages. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Business. In 2016, Indiana was home to seven Fortune 500 companies with a combined $142.5 billion in revenue. Columbus-based Cummins, Inc. and Indianapolis-based Eli Lilly and & Company and Simon Property Group were recognized in Fortune Publications' 2017 World's Most Admired Companies list. Ranking in each of their respective industries, Northwest Indiana has been the largest steel producing center in the U.S. since 1975 and accounted for 27% of American made steel in 2016. Indiana is home to the international headquarters and research facilities of pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly in Indianapolis, the state's largest corporation, as well as the world headquarters of Mead Johnson Nutritionals in Evansville. Overall, Indiana ranks fifth among all U.S. states in total sales and shipments of pharmaceutical products and second highest in the number of biopharmaceutical related jobs. Indiana is located within the U.S. Corn Belt and Grain Belt. The state has a feedlot style system raising corn to fatten hogs and cattle. Along with corn, soybeans are also a major cash crop. Its proximity to large urban centers, such as Indianapolis and Chicago, assure that dairying, egg production, and specialty horticulture occur. Other crops include melons, tomatoes, grapes, mint, popping corn, and tobacco in the southern counties. Most of the original land was not prairie and had to be cleared of deciduous trees. Many parcels of woodland remain and support a furniture-making sector in the southern portion of the state. In 2011 Indiana was ranked first in the Midwest and sixth in the country for best places to do business according to CEO magazine. <laughs> state budget Indiana does not have a legal requirement to balance the state budget either in law or its constitution. Instead, it has a constitutional ban on assuming debt. The state has a rainy day fund and for healthy reserves proportional to spending. Indiana is one of six U.S. states to not allow a line item veto. Indiana has a flat state income tax rate of 3.23%. Many of the state's counties also collect income tax. The state sales tax rate is 7% with exemptions for food, prescription medications and over-the-counter medications. In some jurisdictions, an additional food and beverage tax is charged, at a rate of 1%. Marion County's rate is 2%. On sales of prepared meals and beverages, property taxes are imposed on both real and personal property in Indiana and are administered by the Department of Local Government Finance. Property is subject to taxation by a variety of taxing units schools, counties, townships, municipalities, and libraries, making the total tax rate the sum of the tax rates imposed by all taxing units in which a property is located. However, a circuit breaker Law enacted on March 19, 2008 limits property taxes to 1% of assessed value for homeowners, 2% for rental properties and farmland, and 3% for businesses. In fiscal year 2011, Indiana reported one of the largest surpluses among U.S. states, with an extra $1.2 billion in its accounts. Governor Mitch Daniels authorized bonus payments of up to $1,000 for state employees on Friday, July 15, 2011. An employee who meets expectations will get $500. Those who exceed expectations will receive $750, and outstanding workers will see an extra $1,000 in their August paychecks. Since 2010, Indiana has been one of a few states to hold AAA bond credit ratings with the big three credit rating agencies, the highest possible rating. Topic: 
Topic: Energy. Indiana's power production chiefly consists of the consumption of fossil fuels, mainly coal. Indiana has 24 coal power plants, including the largest coal power plant in the United States, Gibson Generating Station, located across the Wabash River from Mount Carmel, Illinois. Indiana is also home to the coal-fired plant with the highest sulfur dioxide emissions in the United States, the Gallagher Power Plant just west of New Albany. The state has an estimated coal reserves of 57 billion tons. State mining operations produces 35 million tons of coal annually. Indiana also possesses at least 900 million barrels of petroleum reserves in the Trenton field, though not easily recoverable. While Indiana has made commitments to increasing use of renewable resources such as wind, hydroelectric, biomass, or solar power, however, progress has been very slow, mainly because of the continued abundance of coal in southern Indiana. Most of the new plants in the state have been coal gasification plants. Another source is hydroelectric power. Wind power is now being developed. New estimates in 2006 raised the wind capacity for Indiana from 30 MW at 50 m turbine height to 40,000 MW at 70 m, and to 130,000 MW at 100 m. In 2010, the height of newer turbines. As of the end of 2011, Indiana has installed 1,340 MW of wind turbines. Transportation Airports Indianapolis International Airport serves the Greater Indianapolis area and has finished constructing a new passenger terminal. The new airport opened in November 2008 and offers a new midfield passenger terminal, concourses, air traffic control tower, parking garage, and airfield and apron improvements. Other major airports include Evansville Regional Airport, Fort Wayne International Airport, which houses the 122D fighter wing of the Air National Guard, and South Bend International Airport. A long-standing proposal to turn Gary Chicago International Airport into Chicago's third major airport received a boost in early 2006 with the approval of $48 million in federal funding over the next 10 years. The Terre Haute Regional Airport has no airlines operating out of the facility but is used for private flying. Since 1954, the 181st Fighter Wing of the Indiana Air National Guard has been stationed at the airport. However, the Base Realignment and Closure BRAC proposal of 2005 stated that the 181st would lose its fighter mission and F-16 aircraft, leaving the Terre Haute facility as a general aviation-only facility. The southern part of the state is also served by the Louisville International Airport across the Ohio River in Louisville, Kentucky. The southeastern part of the state is served by the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport also across the Ohio River in Hebron, Kentucky. Most residents of northwest Indiana, which is primarily in the Chicago metropolitan area, use the two Chicago airports, O'Hare International Airport and Chicago Midway International Airport. Highways <laughs> 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 The major U.S. interstate highways in Indiana are Interstate 64 I-64, I-65, I-265, I-465, I-865, I-865, I-69, I-469, I-70, I-74, I-80, I-90, I-94, and I-275. The various highways intersecting in and around Indianapolis, along with its historical status as a major railroad hub, and the canals that once crossed Indiana, are the source of the state's motto, the Crossroads of America. There are also many U.S. routes and state highways maintained by the Indiana Department of Transportation. 
These are numbered according to the same convention as U.S. highways. Indiana allows highways of different classifications to have the same number. For example, I-64 and Indiana State Road 64 both exist rather close to each other in Indiana, but are two distinct roads with no relation to one another. A $3 billion project extending I-69 is currently underway. The project was divided into six sections, with the first four sections linking Evansville to Bloomington now complete. The fifth section between Bloomington and Martinsville is currently under construction, while the sixth and final phase to Indianapolis is in planning. When complete, I-69 will traverse an additional 142 miles (229 kilometers) through the state. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> County roads. Most Indiana counties use a grid-based system to identify county roads, this system replaced the older arbitrary system of road numbers and names, and among other things, makes it much easier to identify the sources of calls placed to the 911 system. Such systems are easier to implement in the glacially flattened northern and central portions of the state. Rural counties in the southern third of the state are less likely to have grids and more likely to rely on unsystematic road names e.g., Crawford, Harrison, Perry, Scott, and Washington counties. There are also counties in the northern portions of the state that have never implemented a grid, or have only partially implemented one. Some counties are also laid out in an almost diamond-like grid system e.g., Clark, Floyd, Gibson, and Knox counties. Such a system is also almost useless in those situations as well. Knox County once operated two different grid systems for county roads because the county was laid out using two different survey grids, but has since decided to use road names and combine roads instead. Notably, the county road grid system of St. Joseph County, whose major city is South Bend, uses perennial tree names i.e. Ash, Hickory, Ironwood, etc. in alphabetical order for north-south roads and presidential and other noteworthy names i.e. Adams, Edison, Lincoln Way, etc. in alphabetical order for east-west roads. There are exceptions to this rule in downtown South Bend and Mishawaka. Hamilton County just continues the numbered street system from downtown Indianapolis from 96th Street at the Marion County Line to 296th Street at the Tipton County Line. Rail <inaudible> 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 Indiana has more than 4,255 railroad route miles, of which 91% are operated by Class I railroads, principally CSX Transportation and the Norfolk Southern Railway. Other Class I railroads in Indiana include the Canadian National Railway and Sioux Line Railroad, a Canadian Pacific Railway subsidiary, as well as Amtrak. The remaining miles are operated by 37 regional, local, and switching and terminal railroads. The South Shore Line is one of the country's most notable commuter rail systems, extending from Chicago to South Bend. Indiana is currently implementing an extensive rail plan that was prepared in 2002 by the Parsons Corporation. Many recreational trails, such as the Monon Trail and Cardinal Greenway, have been created from abandoned rails routes. Topic: <laughs> Ports. Indiana annually ships over 70 million tons of cargo by water each year, which ranks 14th among all US states. More than half of Indiana's border is water, which includes 400 miles (640 kilometers) of direct access to two major freight transportation arteries: the Great Lakes Street Lawrence Seaway via Lake Michigan and the Inland Waterway System via the Ohio River. 
The Ports of Indiana manages three major ports which include Burns Harbor, Jeffersonville, and Mount Vernon. In Evansville, three public and several private port facilities receive year-round service from five major barge lines operating on the Ohio River. Evansville has been a U.S. Customs port of entry for more than 125 years. Because of this, it is possible to have international cargo shipped to Evansville in bond. The international cargo can then clear customs in Evansville rather than a coastal port. Topic education Indiana's 1816 Constitution was the first in the country to implement a state-funded public school system. It also allotted one township for a public university. However, the plan turned out to be far too idealistic for a pioneer society, as tax money was not accessible for its organization. In the 1840s, Caleb Mills pressed the need for tax-supported schools, and in 1851 his advice was included in the new state constitution. Although the growth of the public school system was held up by legal entanglements, many public elementary schools were in use by 1870. Most children in Indiana attend public schools, but nearly 10% attend private schools and parochial schools. About one half of all college students in Indiana are enrolled in state-supported four-year schools. Indiana public schools have gone through several changes throughout Indiana's history. Modern, public school standards, have been implemented all throughout the state. These new standards were adopted in April 2014. The overall goal of these new state standards is to ensure Indiana students have the necessary skills and requirements needed to enter college or the workforce upon high school graduation. State standards can be found for nearly every major subject taught in Indiana public schools. Mathematics, English, language arts, science, and social studies are among the top, prioritized standards. The Indiana Department of Education reported in 2017 that the state's overall graduation rates were 87.19% for wavered graduations and 80.10% for non waiver graduations. The largest educational institution is Indiana University, the flagship campus of which was endorsed as Indiana Seminary in 1820. Indiana State University was established as the state's normal school in 1865. Purdue University was chartered as a land grant college in 1869. The three other independent state universities are Vincennes University, founded in 1801 by the Indiana Territory, Ball State University, 1918, and University of Southern Indiana, 1965 as Eshu, Evansville. Many of the private colleges and universities in Indiana are affiliated with religious groups. The University of Notre Dame, Marion University, and the University of St. Francis are popular Roman Catholic schools. Universities affiliated with Protestant denominations include Anderson University, Butler University, Indiana Wesleyan University, Taylor University, Franklin College, Hanover College, DePau University, Earlham College, Valparaiso University, University of Indianapolis, and University of Evansville. The state's community college system, Ivy Tech Community College of Indiana, serves nearly 200,000 students annually, making it the state's largest public post-secondary educational institution and the nation's largest singly accredited statewide community college system. In 2008, the Indiana University System agreed to shift most of its associate two-year degrees to the Ivy Tech Community College System. The state has several universities ranked among the best in 2013 rankings of the U.S. News and World Report. The University of Notre Dame is ranked among the top 20, with Indiana University Bloomington and Purdue University ranking in the top 100. Indiana University, Purdue University Indianapolis IUPUI, has recently made it into the top 200 U.S. News & World Report rankings. Butler, Valparaiso, and the University of Evansville are ranked among the top 10 in the Regional University Midwest rankings. 
Purdue's engineering programs are ranked eighth in the country. In addition, Taylor University is ranked first in the Regional College Midwest rankings and Rose Hulman Institute of Technology has been considered the top undergraduate engineering school where a doctorate is not offered for 15 consecutive years. Topic: See also Index of Indiana related articles Outline of Indiana – Organized list of topics about Indiana List of people from Indiana <laughs>